we've, we've got our scores here, um, and uh, one, one thing that's worthwhile looking at, I think, is quickly, is of these eight methods here, which would you say were the most commonly used in Wales, England indeed, uh, uh, in schools and in colleges today? Which are the most common ones? Top two? Top two? Which are the worst ones? So we've got a bit of work to do here. It's not our fault, actually. Uh, it's not our fault that these, because these methods were the way we were taught, if uh, probably, not necessarily, I perhaps some of the younger ones of you, but uh, certainly the way I was taught, uh, although I'm, you know, much older than most of you. <laughs> but um, uh, so, you know, the, the way we were taught, and also, more tellingly probably, we were probably trained you know, to use those methods. It was expected of us to use those methods because that is the way we do it. That's what question and answer is, isn't it? That's what we do. But the researchers have discovered a whole lot of methods which, you know, and roughly speaking, the ones are... Oh, actually, I should have... I've missed one. Sorry. Buzz nominees and downwards are generally considered to be interactive. So these are interactive. The idea is... There's interaction between the students, right? The student dialogue. One student's turning to the other and saying, I think the answer's 42, what do you think? No, it can't be because, yeah? There's dialogue here, right? So there's interactivity between the students, but there's also interactivity between the teacher and the class. The teacher says, you know, say assertive questioning, what did you three get? We got 42, thank you. Anybody else got that answer? Right? Doesn't evaluate the answer, just says thank you. Anybody else got that? Yeah, a few groups have. I notice you've not put your hand up. What you, answer have you got? We've got 17. Oh, why have you got 17? Uh, and then you hear the answer. You say, oh, that's interesting. So uh, what do you think they've, what mistake have they made then? Oh, well, did they didn't notice there was a minus sign. So uh, do you agree? No, we disagree. Why do you disagree? So what's happening now is I'm getting brilliant feedback on the level of understanding across the whole class. How many, how many, else has, how many other students have got that same answer? Yeah? Hands go up, I know who's got it and who hasn't. I've got representative feedback while I'm teaching as to who's got it and who hasn't and who understands it and who doesn't. I'd like to make a special case for these first three here. Yeah? Because if you've got those going really well, you've got every student doing it, the teacher knows who's got it and who hasn't got it, and therefore can do something about it and put it right, on the hoof, in the moment. And here, the student has got an opportunity to, if they, know, if they don't understand something, they can turn to another student and say, I don't get this, what's going on? Yeah? So we've got here uh, a self-correcting classroom, if you've got high scores here. While the learning's going on, we don't have to wait for the test to come back. We don't have to wait for the homework to come back. We can tell in the lesson some students have got it, everybody's doing it, but some students have got it and some haven't, and I know which ones haven't got it. Who else has got 42 as their answer? Why have you got 42? And, you know, I can, I can, uh, I can home in on that misunderstanding and put it right in that moment. I'm correcting the misconceptions as they're being created and putting them right before they do serious damage, as it were. And a student who hasn't got it knows they haven't got it and is in, is, it wants to sort of put it right, as it were. And they actually do want to put it right, because if you look at assertive questioning, it's one of my favourites, but that's just a personal view. Um, if you look at assertive questioning, the way, because the teacher chooses who from the threesome will answer for that threesome, all three students think, I bet he chooses me. Yeah? I bet he chooses me. So the weaker student in that threesome will be turning to the other two and saying, what do we think? Why do we think it? because I bet he asks me. Uh, and so the whole group are, are clear on what they think and why they think it. Also, if a student misrepresents their group and says, we said so-and-so, when they didn't, the other two students say, that's not what we said. They don't like being misrepresented. So there's peer pressure um, to, to be clear on what the group thinks and why they think it. So uh, a lot of these methods are very sophisticated, actually, in terms of how they get high participation rate. And by that, I mean all the students actually doing it, thinking it, doing whatever, whatever task you've set to try and engage them. You know, they're all uh, aiming for that. Um, uh, very sophisticated uh, in terms of, you know, making sure it sort of covers everything here. As you can see, there's a lot of things here. Get two and three stars across the board. 
You know, it's just an astonishing achievement when you think about it. Those are not random criteria. If you think about that cycle, about the cycle that uh, is characteristic of the very best teaching methods, it's, um, it requires everybody to be forming an understanding, the teacher to know when the student hasn't got it, and the student to know when they haven't got it, so they can, uh, that cycle is embedded in those three things there. If you've got, just one last thing, if you've got low scores on these three, which many teaching methods do have, yeah? If you've got low scores on those three, you've got a blind classroom. Because not everybody's doing it, that's bad news enough, but you don't know who's got it and who hasn't. Now, you don't know who's got it and who hasn't. And a student who hasn't got it probably doesn't know they haven't got it. And if they do, they don't care because they just think, well, she's not going to ask me, is she? Keep my hands down. Yeah? So you've, you've got no sort of social pressure, as it were, on the, on, on the weaker, slightly, uh, you know, sort of less motivated student to actually sort of do their, do their stuff. But the fascinating thing is, when you start using these methods, which incidentally take a long time to get used to as a teacher, it took me at least a term to get my head around how to do this. When you get used to these methods, they're far more fun for you and the students than the conventional teaching methods. The students love it when you say, thank you very much, does anybody agree with that? Yeah, I agree with it. And then another student over here, no, I don't. Why don't you agree? Because it sounds so. And then this, this student over here, that's not right. Of course there's no minus seven here or whatever. And we get, you, you can stand back and there's a tremendous argument in mathematical language, say, or whatever your subject.